Hello, um, this tractor and I have something in common. We both arrived in 1938. Since my birthday's in December, I have to believe the tractor came first. One of the two of us has been restored to look almost the same as it was back then. Kids, uh, you get a chance to see what it's like to sit on a, a farmer's first tractor back in 1938. That would be like when your maybe your great grandpa was around and it looks very much like it did then. You can sit on it and get the feel for what it must have been like to drive that tractor and if you're about 10 years old you can imagine driving this tractor and having a grandpa sitting on the machine behind you and if you didn't drive just correctly you needed to work on it because harvesting grain this would be pulling the grain binder harvesting grain was very very serious that's the crop and it's got to be done right but I remember driving uh, pulling the uh, grain binder and grandpa sitting on it making sure everything was working right and we spent hours in the field doing that and we'd like to have you sit on it and think what is it like to be a kid on a farm when you're 10 years old and this would be your first tractor. And I'd like to tell you a little bit about this tractor. It must have been very exciting when a farmer got the first tractor, that shiny object coming into the yard that would help with the team of horses. Now we still had horses and uh, I remember them as well because they were still there when I was growing up and one of them's name was Bird, a female, and the other one's name was Nellie. They didn't look at all alike. One was sorrel and the other one was white. But they pulled together and they were still used after we got the tractor. But I wanted to tell you a little bit about the tractor and what led to uh, some of the changes that occurred. Now Dad really loved this tractor, especially because, well he used it for plowing and it would plow a 214 plow which meant it would take a strip about this wide, 28 inches of land and, and, and plow it. And it would take several days to plow a field. And um, that was still better than a team of horses, however. But what he really liked is the cultivator that came with it. Now prior to that, he cultivated with a team of horses and it would be a one row cultivator and the uh, corn rows were spaced wide enough for a horse to walk down that row of uh, corn, one on each side of the rows, rows cultivating. And um, that would be a rather slow process as well. And the cultivator is a two row cultivator. And when the corn is just coming up, you could shift into low gear. It has three gears forward. You could shift into low gear and just creep down the field to make sure you didn't cover any corn. But when the corn got bigger and you could go much faster, you would shift into third gear. Much faster than a team of horses, plus two rows. And you're sitting down fairly comfortable. So Dad really loved that. But it's a family farm. And that means kids are supposed to do some work. And can they drive the tractor? Well, here's the clutch. It pushes really hard with your foot, of course. And then you would have to push the clutch in and then shift it. Your two hands are on the steering wheel, but the brakes are hand operated. So now if you're driving and you want to put the brakes on, you have to leave the steering wheel, pull the brakes. If you want to stop, you got to press the, the clutch. Now that's really hard for a child, especially like when I was 10 years old. And I struggled with that, but I could push the clutch. We had level ground, so I didn't have to worry about the tractor rolling. And I would shift it, but once I remember my foot did slip off as I was approaching the, the machine shed, and I thought I was going to ram into the machine shed before I got my foot back on the clutch. It was a struggle. 
Now my sisters were supposed to drive tractors also. My older sister drove this one quite a bit. She was three years older and of course reached tractor driving age before I did. So what dad did, I remember the time uh, he said we're going to get a hand clutch tractor. There were three choices as I remember. Uh, Case had a hand operated tractor. John Deere of course did at that time. That was the only available um, John Deere tractor at that time I remember. And so did Minneapolis Moline. Now the Minneapolis Moline dealer was nearby and that's the tractor we ended up with. A hand clutch. You could push the clutch forward and the tractor would go forward. When you wanted to stop you pulled the clutch back. No shifting. You could go all day long without shifting gears. But here you'd have to push the clutch in. If you had stop and go needs, you'd push the clutch in, shift, go forward, and when you wanted to stop, you'd push the clutch in and either hold it down or you'd have to take it out of gear, release the clutch. Then when you got ready to go again, you'd push the clutch in, shift it, and go forward. Really not very friendly for children to drive the tractor. So between this tractor and the other one, and we still had the team of horses till about 1953, I think it was, when I think it was Nellie died, and that was the end of the horse era on this farm. And Dad still liked to, to have those, those horses, but he had to make the transition. But this tractor was um, really his, um, I could tell it was really his favorite, but it was difficult for us children to drive. And even after we didn't have horses, we stayed with that 40 inch roll for a while just because, well, that's what we had and the equipment was designed for it. And then farmers decided you didn't need that much space and you could get an increase in yield simply by narrowing the rows of corn, getting more rows in the field. So I remember the first uh, farmer in our neighborhood on the 4th of July mentioned that he went to a 30 inch spacing on his corn rows. And the farmers all gasped and said, well, how are you going to raise corn at 30 inches? Is there going to be enough moisture and will the corn get enough sunlight? The farmer's name was Carlton Sales and he said, well, he said, I don't need that space because I don't have horses and the tractor wheels aren't anywhere near that wide. And now today you know what the spacing of cornrows is? 20 inches. You know why? They don't even drive a tractor down the rows anymore until harvest time. They don't cultivate anymore. That was one of the reasons you had to drive the tractor. So now 20 inch rows is, is very standard on high producing cornfields and that might be the ultimate. I don't see it going less than that. Our farm was very standard size at that time. It would be called 160, but because of the range line that Dad said they didn't get placed just quite right back in the days of surveying, it actually was 176. But 160 was the standard because that's what the government um, allowed people to have under certain conditions when the railroad went through and all of that, 160 acres was considered a farm. Now there were some that were less than that and some farmers of course bought other farms and increased it. But then after horses, the farms greatly increased in size because a farmer could do so much more with a large tractor than you could with horses and who knows how large they're going to get. We, and now I know farmers that we used to have as neighbors with 160 acres, now they talk about multiple numbers of farms, maybe a thousand acres as possible, maybe more. Now because this tractor has a hand clutch, and if you want to make a tight turn, the typical way would be to turn the steering wheel apply the brake on the inside uh, wheel that you're turning and the tractor would turn around. What are you going to do here? You got two hands on the steering wheel and believe me you need two hands on this steering wheel and the clutch is a hand operated clutch. So this tractor has a built-in feature and I don't think this feature lasted very long 
because they came out with power steering which made steering with one hand very easy and um, and and foot brakes of course but that feature is this here is the hand operated clutch and let's say you want it to turn left up in the front which is concealed behind this frame is a push rod and when the wheel is turned slightly it pushes that rod and applies the brake for you so you don't need your foot and they did that because of course you can't apply hands on uh, steering and the and the uh, brake at the same time dad thought that was just great he would demonstrate that to me he would be driving and he'd turn the steering wheel a little bit to the left for example this wheel would stop and he could swing that tractor right around now you say well is he a kid what's he trying to do show off no when you cultivate corn you go down two rows you make a very sharp turn and come back on the next two and that mechanism that made that steering possible was used all the time now you say well maybe you could go down two rows and drive a ways and then turn into the next uh, two other rows but then you'd be driving over corn at the end of the field so it all worked out for dad but not so much for us kids so we got the tractor with the hand clutch all right well then um, dad used this tractor and when I got it in about 19 I suppose about 1990 uh, Dad was unable to use the tractor anymore. It still had the cultivator on it. It had been parked for many years. Had the original tires, inflated in 1938, never deflated. And um, we took it out in the yard, and by pulling it, it we, we got it started. And I brought it up, and I did a new paint job, so... Um, it would look like I, I think it looks about the same way it was the day it was delivered and it must have been very exciting just like when I got my other tractor I found that very exciting as, as well but um, but this was different because it was a person's first tractor it wasn't down the road the second or third time you had a tractor so you could go out in the shed in the morning, start it. You didn't have to feed it any particular formula. You put gas in. I remember you'd always check the oil and go all day, bring it home, park it, and forget about it. A team of horses you bring home, you take care of them. You feed them, you clean up after them, you make sure they're healthy, and uh, that was the change that occurred in farming. And Dad would never believe that it is setting here looking like this. It never looked like this much after the day he bought it. We never washed tractors. They had the, a little bit of farm on it. That didn't hurt it, but I cleaned it up. So here it's setting on the farm and I just hope that kids enjoy it. And I, every time I see a kid on I think dad would never believe this. But then one of the kids came one year and they showed me a picture from their school, they were supposed to bring a picture of something that reminded them of some experience, whatever it was. And one of the kids had taken a picture of this tractor and posted it on the wall in their school. And I thought, <laughs> Dad could never believe, Dad would never believe that this tractor showed up in some room, schoolhouse, on a picture. But I think it's great because it reminds me of some good old days and I think kids can connect a little bit with the past. They might, they might say, my gosh, how small it is. And it is for tractors nowadays. But it did the work. It replaced a team of horses.